Today, we're going to start off with a little review. And I have started with a sequence, uh, 3, 9, 15, 21. And you could use inductive reasoning to figure out what the next values are. If you notice this review from last year, this, what we do is we find the difference from 3 to 9 is plus 6, 9 to 15 is plus 6, and 15 to 21, that's plus 6. That first difference tells us that this is a linear pattern, right? And our rules for linear patterns, if you remember, we would do something like uh, a sub n is equal to that 6 times n sub 6 times n minus 1, and then you add your a sub 1. Hopefully that kind of remembers. that, And of course, that is kind of like point slope. I should tell you, should you remind you, though, that if I give you any sequence, that's the first term, that's the second term, there's the third term, fourth term, no matter what. If they're not written out, they're implied. The first number is the first number. No one starts counting with zero. That's the first term. Okay, you may also see me, well, if you simplify this, that's 6n minus 6 plus 3, and that would be 6n minus 3, which is a simplified version that would still generate this sequence. Uh, I'd like to point out, if, if that's the first term, if I was going to go back to a zero term, it would be also 6 behind that, and 6 behind the 3, of course, would be uh, negative 3. Uh, so you also could think of this linear sequence being your first difference times n uh, plus your zero term. And you will see me do that at times. All right, let's do another one just to make sure that we're on board. All right, so negative 4, 4, 12, and 20. First off, I notice right away that I'm growing by 8 each time. First difference is constant. I have a linear value. Let's do it the shortcut way, of course, I could do, if I go back and find my zero term, you'll see me do that, it would be 8 from there, it, had to, it would have to be 8 from the negative 4, which would be negative 12, right? So, that means that this is uh, 8 times n minus 12. And that is my a sub n, or my y equals, or something like that, right? Uh, so for the calculator, it's y equals. Uh, let's see. A and I would like to check. That's my first term, second term, third term, fourth term. If I plug it in the first term, that would be 8 times 1 minus 12. That would be negative 4. And 2 would be 8 times uh, 2 is 16 minus 12 is 4. Yay. Okay. Now. There are other patterns that we had last year, such as this one. Not a constant difference. Yes, it's growing by 6 and then by 12. Oh, and then by 24. Oh, that looks great. What this has is a constant multiplier, or as we called it, that constant, that common ratio. And the way to write that was like, uh, let's see, we used the the 2, yes, and then we, you had the first term, which was a 6, and we would raise it to a power, and we raised it to the power of n minus 1, if you recall. Um, so this would be your first term, and there's your common ratio, and then n times n minus 1. I could also write this because if I do the same thing and went backwards one, what do I multiply by 2 to get 6? And that would be a 3. And that changes this just a little bit because it would be 6 times 
no, excuse me, not six. It would be three times the common ratio raised to the n power. It's just shifting the pattern back a little bit. Instead of starting, this one starts off with the first term. This one would start off with the first term, but I'm using the zero term to help me write it. Now to the meat and potatoes of today's lesson. We get into figure it numbers. And figure it numbers just means it's a sequence that has a figure that can be associated with the sequence. So let's start off with one that you are familiar with. I have the square numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16. These are the perfect square numbers. And because there's a square that can be associated with that, it's a 1 by 1 square is 1, a 2 by 2 square is 4, a 3 by 3 square is not yet. You, I'm sure you've seen that before. Well, you might have even seen triangular numbers. There are triangular numbers because I can make triangles with 1, 3, and I build another triangle, 6, and even 10, right? Notice what I'm doing that each time I'm maintaining what I have and building an extra one, so 10. Any sequence that has a figure, this this is kind of amazing. So uh, I have one down here, these are pentagonal numbers, and let me show you how I drew that. That's a one, that's five, five dots, fantastic. 12 is the five dots that I have originally, and then I added to each side. This is a one by one by one. This has got two on each side. It gives me 12. And then on the next the next pattern would give me 22. Keeps the 12 that I have here and then adds it on each side being three. Now, these are a little bit different. You may know uh, already that square numbers are written as n squared. Uh, triangular numbers are a little bit different, but they are kind of uh, familiar because that's plus two that's plus three, and that's plus four, okay? This one's plus four, plus seven, plus 10. Maybe that looks familiar to you. So uh, that, of course, means that they're quadratic. Now, we can use our figures for rectangle, rectangular numbers. Now, the thing about rectangles, they come in all different shapes. And so I have chosen to uh, make my rectangles, I start off with a 2 by 5, a 3 by 6, 4 by 7, and a 5 by 8. Of course, the number that's associated with 2 by 5 is 10. The number that's associated with 3 by 6 is 18. Uh, 4 by 7 is 28. And 5 by 8 is a 40. And we could keep on going. Yes, there's a pattern that, that those rectangular numbers. And what I'm going to do is use the dimensions of the rectangle to help me write the pattern. So you'll see that there's a two, three, four, five. So the circles give me a pattern of two, three, four, five, and on and on and on. And I could make another pattern with the length put it like this, like this. It says five, six, seven, eight. And you'll notice that both of those patterns are linear. And so to write the rule that generates a 10, 18, 28, and 40, all I have to do is write two linear rules and combine them. Okay, this one has a constant difference of one. So it's basically one times n minus 1, right? And then plus 2. If I simplify that, that's going to be uh, 1 times n minus 1 plus 2, which equals to n minus uh, plus 1. Right? You probably knew that already, right? Because it's just one bigger. This is my first term, second term, third term, fourth term, right? And so, yes, first term, second term, third term, I'm only off by one. Now, five, six, seven, eight, using what we just did, how far am I off? It's one in, right? Well, I'll do it the long way. One times n minus one plus 
5, which is 1n minus 1 plus 5, which is equal to n plus 4. And yes, I am 4 off. The sequence, the rectangular sequence now, is nothing more than the circles multiplied by the squares, or n plus 1 times n plus 4.